<laughs> anyway, I thought I thought we might have a little bit of a conversation about um, priming the girls up. This is like, um, well, if you only got a one beehive in your backyard, you probably don't have to bother too much. But these ladies, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna rev them up for the almond blossom. So trying to get them to just get breeding a bit quicker. So I've given them a bit of sugar syrup. I've also given them, given them some of this. Um, what is it called? Complete bee feed, I think it was called, which is the one that I'm using in here at the minute. And I've made this crazy feeder up. And anyway, we'll have a bit of a poke out. We'll poke our head in there because the ladies are having a bit of a run around. They're getting a bit more enthusiastic, the little greedy pots. Tell you what, I was reading a bit of an article the other day about some boys that were up on the jelly bush, which is Manuka, um, and they were feeding hell what were they feeding 200 kilos a day or something crazy of this stuff to keep them going because that's a little bit enthusiastic me i'm no any of that i'm just trying to get them a little bit primed up because these little boxes here were a bit early on and um yeah i just i haven't had time to make the patties up so i thought i'll do this and plus it's pretty good bit of footage so we'll take the lid off i designed this little one so you can actually have a bit of a look in the one we're going to make later on i'll probably won't be as easy to film out of so i thought we'll make one that you can at least get some decent footage. Well, hopefully get some decent footage. I'm not 100% sure what's in this gear, but there's some of the granules are a little bit too heavy for them to carry off. So it ends up making a bit of a crust. Um, but I just thought this makes some pretty cool footage. That's why we're feeding them out here. So you can have a look at these girls are basically filling up their pollen sacks which they would normally, when you're on a flower, they stuff all the pollen in the back of their legs. But this is just like to give them a bit of a helping hand. They're still getting some natural pollen, and this is just to top them up. And um, yeah, just get them ramped up for when the flowers come, because that's not very far away. And also giving them some sugar at the same time. So we'll probably splash a bit more sugar into them. You don't want to be feeding your bees too much sugar in the, in the middle of winter. So we're coming into spring here. Well, uh, well it's still winter, but it's the end of the, after the equinox. Is that the equinox when the days change the lengths? Is that called an equinox? Anyway, the days are getting longer, not shorter, so we've got the other bit of that bit. So, <laughs> so we're getting a whole extra 10 minutes of sunshine. So anyway, they're getting psyched up for the spring flow, and this is just to boost them up a bit so they'll breed a bit quicker and be a bit more ambitious when the, when the pollen flow comes on. You got that enthusiastic, they're in the bucket already before I even get it in the pot. <laughs> I don't know where these bees are. I think these bees might be coming from up the other way as well. That's right, we're gonna give them some tomorrow. One thing that I seem, seem to find that it works pretty good with this open feeding concept is if you make it into a bit of a pile, like a bit of a mound, because otherwise they end up with a layer they can't get through. So if you have little mounds, They'll sort of work on the edge of it and of course it'll keep falling down and they'll find some new fresh stuff. Look at that, they're not even fussed about it. They don't know about the camera. They haven't even tried to sting the cameraman there that off their face on pollen. That's pretty good. And just watching these girls coming and going here, I'm just sort of, I don't know how many, how many extra bees I'm feeding. Which is always the problem when you're doing open feed, unless you're way out by yourself, you know, you're not sure. But for the most part, all the bees that are around here are mine anyway, so it should be cool. But it makes some awesome footage for you. But anyway, I'm digressing, sorry, I'm just sitting here watching the ladies having a fly. Well, the other part of actually getting them ready for, har uh, for the blossom, I'm calling it harvest, where you go, I'm a bit ahead of myself. The other part of getting the ladies ready for the for the blossom time is you give them a bit of sugar water as well, which we've mixed up. You don't want to get psycho feeding them. You want to give them a little bit along the way so they're still off getting some nectar and getting excited. But if you just give them a little bit, then that will help with the brood, and which will help. So which is what we're feeding them the pollen substitute for. So they'll get some protein. They'll get some uh, carbohydrates out of the sugar, and hopefully they'll breed the little asses off so they'll be ready to suck some pollen down out of my almond trees. So I've got some little in-house frame feeders in these boxes. So that are actually 
feeding them inside themselves. So I've tried a few different things with feeding. Um, the ones at home I actually just have, because I've only got a little few hives there. So I'll just feed them in the open with some corks in a little bowl. But these girls here, I've got some feeders in their, in their boxes because I actually wanted them to be fed individually. Plus, this way, I found with the ones you put in the mouth of the, I mean, this time of year it wouldn't be too bad, but you know when you, you can get a little bottle like this and you can get a little plastic thing and you can slide it into the mouth of the bee box. I found that that's, they'd work okay, except for the fact that you get a blooming invasion of ants. And of course, ants and bees, they don't go together too, Flash. No, they, don't, they don't really like each other. So uh, anyway, that's been that's been my little experience. So if you're wondering about my high peak high tech pieces of wood on top of me boxes here, it's because I come out here one day and the bloody one of the lids had blown off, and a bloke hasn't got enough straps for these ones at the minute. So anyway, very very high tech. We'll see how angry they are. Oh, they're getting a bit enthusiastic here. So okay, so these are just the hive feeders. Just be very gentle because the lady's a little bit tubby. <laughs> Haven't quite finished. So you got the obviously got that sits in the hive, obviously sits in there in between them where the bars would be. Got this cool little funnel they can run down into so they don't get drowned. And they've about nibbled off that. They've just about finished that. So we're just going to top them up. Only going to give them a, only going to give them one litre this time because that's all I've got with us. I've got a cool new saucepan. Remind me to show you the cool new saucepan that I've organised. This is my high-tech way to do the feeding. Because um, I tried it with a funnel and a little pot and all the rest of it. And you really don't want sugar and syrup and crap going everywhere. Because as I said earlier, all that does is bring the ants along. And we're not really in the business of feeding the ants. We're in the business of feeding the lady. So this is my pro my way of getting it in the in the feeder without making a mess. I'm sure there's a much more high tech way to do it but you know you could probably you could probably flog the wife's funnel but you know we're a bit fun in all that this, this is the resource that i've got at the minute Yes, yes, bugger off. <laughs> ah, cool, anyway, this is a little bit further away from that feeding pot we were just showing you a minute ago. Now, look, this is why some beekeepers hate open feeding, especially if they've got a heap of hives next to them, because these ladies are a good half a K away, and they're making a pick of themselves. Well, that was a bit of fun. Anyway, those ladies are obviously the young, obviously those ladies are a bit smaller colonies, so we're just trying to ramp them up ready for pollination. So a little bit of pollen, a little bit of sugar, and um, a couple of them aren't responding real flash because they're a bit down, but anyway, the other ones are going awesome, so we'll see. It's all open to review at the minute, but the flowers are coming along. We've got a nice bit of bud swell happening, so I reckon another three or four weeks we'll have flowers everywhere. Hopefully I've got the timing right, but yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm having a crack. 